It's used a lot for prototypes. I think all OEMs use it for prototyping, especially plastic parts. You create your prototype vehicles by printing the parts and then polishing and then painting them. Um, I think that's the main usage. Then we see also in factories that we produce uh, tools, jigs, uh, fixtures in the, the manufacturing. And then we have the third leg, so to say, that we are trying to implement, which is then parts putting them on the trucks, on the cars, to our customers. I think that's where we are moving to more and more now. It's mostly rapid prototyping, but what we are trying to change the perception is end use applications. In fact, we actually manufacture braking systems, suspension systems using metal 3D printing. So we're trying to change the way the industry looks at 3D printing. Well, I'm from, uh, from automotive racing industries, and for us it's a, it's a huge benefit in terms of lightweight. So we use it a lot for lightweight and also in the development, for prototyping, for development, it's a big tool for us. Uh, we use specifically metal 3D printing, it's um, direct metal laser sintering and SLM as well. Uh, we have in our um, company, we have uh, SLA, SLS, we have also small FDM printers and of course we have DMLS technology in-house. We mainly rely on the polymer technologies at the moment. We have uh, everything from simple FDM machines that we use for prototypes in the office to more advanced SLS and MGF machines that we use for our prototypes and toolings. Um, in the future it will probably be an even wider scope of technologies that we use. It's the, it's the flexibility and the ability to design complex parts. So you really get complex parts for free, complexity for free. It's that you don't need any investment. That's one of the key reasons why we are embracing it. When you make prototypes, you don't need to make a tool. And you also save a lot of time when you don't have to make a tool and make that type of investment. So saving money and time uh, are the key things for us. Oh, that's actually massive. Uh, in fact, uh, if you take your average petrol and diesel cars, it improves performance and uh, vehicle dynamics by light weighting. But I guess that's the, that's the past. But if you take the future, which is predominantly electric and self-driving, where 3D printing can actually add a lot of value is specifically in improving the car's range. So you can actually go more miles per charge without um, you know, having to be worried about it. And second of all, in autonomous driving as well, it adds a lot of value in data, wireless transmission back to the cloud. It's important for us both to show what we are doing and to share what the struggles that we have so people can come and help us. We can find suppliers and partners that can help us solve our problems. But it's also important for us to see what's out there, what's on the market, what can we see from, from all the big players out there. It's, uh, we are a small company based out of north of England, so we're not uh, you know, as, as big a company as um, some of the other panel participants. So, you know, coming to this conference has been absolutely massive. I've just secured two partnerships with someone I, didn't, I haven't met before. So it's been really, really massive, really helpful for a small company like us. I think in general shows like this are really important to give the knowledge to a broad range of engineers that they learn how to use 3D printing. My vision, of course, is to have decentralized local manufacturing using personalization and customization. So, uh, Evidently, you could have your cars downloaded and locally 3D printed. That's pretty much our vision, and that's pretty much where we are working as well. Um, in terms of production, I'm, I, I guess it's going to take at least 20 years for automotive industry to come to fully terms with 3D printing as a production capacity. I think we will see a lot more decentralized production. Uh, logistics costs will probably go up a lot in the future. And then being able to print parts more locally, I think that would be a big thing in the automotive 10 years from now. I see it massively in individualization for cars. So tailor-made cars for, uh, for unique persons. I think they really see a strong future.